Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, God morning, great morning. Hey, this is Reverend E.K. Dawson, and today we are welcoming you to Declaring Victory. It is Friday, favorite Friday. It's our men's day, and I know that somebody's on the line, so let's go ahead and say good morning and start this thing off. Praise the Lord. Good morning. It's grateful, Deborah Evans. Happy Super Friday. Deborah Evans, good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you. Good morning. Fabulous Friday to all. This is Yvonne. Good morning, Yvonne. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Come on, y'all. I know y'all there. Come on, holler at a, at your boy. Good morning, God morning, great morning. It's another day's journey. We ought to be glad about it. Welcome to Declaring Victory. Good morning, good morning. This is Sister Lisa. God bless everyone on the call. Happy Friday. Hey, hey, I love hey. Jesus. Hey, hey, I love Jesus. He's my Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you. Have a great day. You too now. Good morning to you, Yvonne. God is good all the time. Yes, he is. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Yvonne. Welcome, 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 welcome. Yes, he is. God is good all the time. Yes, he is. And all the time, God is good. Good morning and welcome. Anybody else on the line? Good morning. God morning. Great morning. Good morning, Rev. Good morning, brother. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad about it. Jesus lifted me. Hallelujah. Happy favorite Friday, y'all. Let's do it. That's it. When I was in trouble, <laughs> verse 2, Jesus lifted me. <laughs> Say glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. And Good morning. We well, trouble welcome. on every side. Yes, our Good mind Lord. will take us there. To God yes. be the glory. Love you, E.K. Love you as well. Hallelujah. All I heard was, we're going to go to the phone, love lifted me. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Love lifted me. Yeah. When nothing else will help, that love lifted me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. glory, God. This is Kathy. Hallelujah. Oh, good morning, DB family. Yes, yes, yes. When nothing else could help. <laughs> he love lifted me. Good morning. God morning. Great morning. It's men's day, and we uh, want to hear some of our brothers sign in. Count in, amen, uh, sound off, amen. This is favorite Friday, amen. Hey, happy Friday, family. Cedric's on the call. Y'all starting it out right this morning. Appreciate y'all. Yes, yes, yes. Right on, Sam. Shabuya. Roll call. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday, Friday. Praise the Lord. It's Friday. Hey. Okay. I just woke up this morning juice, so good morning, Lord. baby family. It is I, Demetriana. There it is. Shabuya. Yeah, hey, hey, Shabuya. Hey, good morning, good morning. <laughs> you took me back on that one. <laughs> good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. It's sunshine. Sunshine. Good morning. And welcome. Yeah, good morning. morning. Uh, there's more up coming in. Hey, excuse me. Hey, Brother Mark. Good morning. Good morning. Bless you, sir. Bless you. 
Amen. Hey, EK, yeah. I just yeah. want to say a happy birthday to my 16-year-old, the last of my Mohicans. Oh, Jesus, two more years, Jesus. So happy birthday, Devin. Oh, nice. Nice. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. May you have peace and the joy of the day. This is Sister Stephanie. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for calling in. Hallelujah. Good morning, Pastor E.K. This is Pastor Daryl. I feel the joy and the energy on here. And I just want to add my little tidbit, Shabua, Bop, Bop, Shabua. I'm going to get my praise on. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Uh, y'all are in here this morning. I love it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hey, Reverend. Re- yeah. Reverend E.K., this is real quick. Yeah. Pastor Daryl is really starting some because, listen, y'all, we know there's so much going on, but if you didn't wake up with a praise because you woke up, I can't even tell you. It's so many people that didn't wake up. So if nothing else, that will give you a shabuya, a shabuya in your soul. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. We could go to go to a corporate praise and everybody just jump in right there. We could go all the way off just for that because we made the wake up list and uh man <laughs> you have no idea. I'm so grateful and glad to be alive. And that's why I always say it's another day's journey and I'm glad about it. Not because I heard some preacher say it and it sounds good and it's fancy or whatever else, but it is another day's journey. I got a whole nother opportunity to glorify God. And he's got a whole nother day for assignment for each one of us. Hallelujah. So I'm excited. And it is a truly another day's journey. And I'm glad about it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, anybody else before we uh, go ahead and get started? Pop in and want to say good morning. Good morning. This is Tornado. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. It's Krishanda. Happy Friday. Declare victory, family. God is amazing. Amen. 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 Well, okay. It's it's definitely our time to get started. Uh with hosting, but before we move forward, we want to ask everybody to place your phone on mute so that we can receive uh proceed. Amen. So please, ma'am, please, sir. Uh, please put your phones on mute. Hello, my name is Reverend E.K. Dawson, and I'm your host. Amen. And I want to thank you for joining us on Declaring Victory, and we are a prayer call that meets Monday through Friday, starting at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, and 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that is to edify and empower, to encourage, and to equip you in your walk with Christ. Uh, Be sure to join us uh, during the month of May, where... Our theme is entitled Assurance of Salvation, Assurance of Salvation, that each declarer will focus on the security and the confidence that the body of Christ has through our relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our Savior. Uh, Be sure to invite a friend so that they can be blessed too. Amen. Uh, Checking that, uh, have checked the, the app. Amen. The order of the prayer call is prayer and corporate praise will be by our own brother Marv. Amen. And the declaration will be brought by our own Pastor Daryl. Again, uh, prayer and corporate praise will be brought by our own brother Marv. And the declaration will be brought by Pastor Daryl. Then we'll go right to closing comments and hosted by the declarer. Amen. And the scripture for today is Acts 16, 31. Here we go. So they, so they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved and your household. Hallelujah. And that's Acts 16 and 31. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. At this time, we're going to ask you to put your phone on mute until instructed to come off of mute. And I now pass the call to our prayer warrior for the day, Brother Mark. Amen. 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 Bless you, everyone. We're just truly thankful for this day, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
Amen. Just truly thankful today. So as we go into prayer today, um, dear God, as we open up to you on this new day, uh, we give thanks to you uh, for this is a day that you have made. Uh, We rejoice in this moment and for we give you praise today for you have given us another day. Um, We praise you, God, not just for this day. Uh, We praise you, God, because as you have started us on a new day's journey, um, you have a purpose for each and every one of us. And so we just say thanks on this day, oh God. Father, you are so awesome and worthy, and all the praise belongs to you. Um, All the praise that we can give belongs to you, oh God. Uh, You're worthy, and you deserve more than we can offer. And so we thank you for everyone who has gathered on the call this morning. Um, Today, dear God, I ask that you would surround us with your powerful and life-changing presence. Thank you for each and every one of us and for calling us to walk with you. Uh, We come before you as we meet today, declaring our dependence on you, O God. Uh, Be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Fill our hearts with your love, O God. I fill our words and conversation with truth and grace. And and today, oh God, I pray that you help us to love as you do and to act as wisely also as you, oh God, so that others will be drawn to your salvation and to hope. Um, Let us today, oh God, uh, be a light that is shining not just in the world, but in the lives of others um, so that they may experience your glory. And then also, God, may we build each other up to encourage each other today as we continue uh, to just celebrate your glory. And we give you glory and honor for all that takes place. I pray for a spirit of grace. I pray, oh God, for forgiveness among all the group members. I pray, oh God, that we will see each other um, as you see us. And, And then also to see others around us as you see them. I pray, dear God, Um, that we are able to continue to have a creative environment uh, which continues to foster and encourage um, uh, a love and encouragement among each and every one of participants. Um, Today, oh God, today I pray that you will look upon every participant and meet them according to their needs. Um, I did not hear any requests this morning, but Father, you know each and every one that, that is on the call. You understand what's going on in each and every one of our, our lives. And so, Father, I ask that you would look upon each person according to their needs. Look on those who are suffering with sickness and, and allow them to experience your healing virtue in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Look upon those who are dealing with uh, relationship problems and, and be their help in their struggles, oh God. Look upon those who are living with burdens of, of financial issues and be their provider as we know that you can. Meet them according to their needs, oh God, because we know, oh God, that our help comes from you. Um, Father, we know that as we look to the hills from whence our, comes our help, we will gain the help that we need. Um, look upon those who weigh, who are weighed down with the responsibilities of family life and work and all the other things that are taking, up, taking place in their lives. Give them the strength that they need to continue on. In every situation, give hope, for our hope is in you. In accordance with your word in 1 John 5, 14, and 15, we pray that you would hear our prayers and grant the petitions we have asked today. Um, We trust in your faithfulness and believe that you are working everything out for our good. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the power of prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the unity um, which we have in prayer in this prayer group. We thank you, Lord, um, that we have the opportunity once again to come together. We thank you, Lord. Um, that as we come together, we come together knowing that all the glory belongs to you. So in this moment, Father God, may we continue to lift each other up and and intercede on the behalf of those in need. Uh, We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor because you alone are worthy. Um, Father, there may be someone grieving in this moment, the loss of loved ones and 
And, Father, we're praying that you would strengthen them right now, God. Give them peace. Give them uh, what they need to continue on. That was someone may even be having struggles on their jobs and, and just struggling to get up to go in this morning. But, Father, we pray that you would give them the ability to get on up and, and, and strength to muster up a little energy to keep going and just knowing that you will be with them in this process. Um, there's someone who's waking up their children and getting them ready for school and getting them ready for other things during the course of this day, and they're just struggling with the process. Father, give them strength right now to just continue on this journey, knowing that it won't be like this always, and just to get up and keep moving. Um, Father, there are those who are just maybe going through some just life experiences that, that in which they're just struggling in their own selves or may not know why, but they're getting up this morning with the struggle and, and just, Father, be with them in this moment. Touch them right now, Father God. Let them know that there is hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel, and all will be well. Oh, Father, and in the midst of all that is going on, we just give you praise, um, give you glory, give you honor, because we know that we would not be able to make it. We would not have been able to make it this far if it had not have been for you, oh God. So, Father, we just thank you. Um, thank you for how you've been there. Thank you for how you are there. And thank you for how you will always be there. So, Father, we just give you praise today and honor because you are worthy of all of it. Would not have made it this far if it had not have been for you. But if it had not have been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be right now? So we praise you, God, uh, for what you've done. We praise you, even, God, as we celebrate the day of Pentecost. We celebrate the moment uh, in which the Holy Spirit came down upon your people, your men, and, and began to preach the word and to people who had not heard it before. But right now, God, we also thank you because the word did not come and, and then just to be spoken, but it also came to change lives. And many of our lives are changed today because of it. So we thank you, dear God. We thank you, dear God. We thank you, dear God. We thank you. Oh, God, we thank you for changed lives, but we're not like we used to be. We thank you, God, that it, even in the process, that it's still a process, but we're getting better. And we thank you, dear God. So right now, right now, if there's anyone that just want to join me, just come in in prayer and just to be able to speak to God today and among this corporate group, just come on in with me today and, and just to give God what is due this morning. Yes, Father, in the name of Jesus, move like ever before. Lord God, we thank you right now for your presence. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord God. 
So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just pray, oh God, that you would meet everyone in all of their respective places as we go forth on this day. For this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So, Father, please guide us on this day. And we just forever give you all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And as we get ready to pass the call, there's a song that comes to mind that just always stuck with me. And it's a song that just we learned when we were children, many of us. And, and it just says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And so I'll just leave that with you this morning. If you decide to follow Jesus, just keep going. So there's no turning back. So God bless each and every one of you this morning. God bless you, Brother Mark. Thank you so much for leading us into prayer, as well as even exalting that psalm to be able to place in our spirit that there is no turning back. I'm just grateful for how God continues to use you, my brother. Thank God for you, for our facilitator, our brother, our friend, Dr. E.K. Dawson. We are grateful for you, man, just for your spirit setting this thing off in the proper direction. Just thank God for using you mightily as well. To our leader, amen, I want to shout a big congratulations to her again on her um, on her being able to be acknowledged in ordination and pastorship. We are grateful just to see God and what he's doing in and through her in the ordination and the pastoral installment. And it's no surprise. I'm just really glad that we're now able to publicly affirm what we already knew, and that is the call that is on our life. So I am not going to bore you. I knew it was going to be this kind of day today. I knew it. When I came on, I felt the energy. I felt everybody that was on and all the pleasantries and the, and the praises that went up, and I just knew it was going to be that kind of day. So I just want to ask, I'm kind of non-conventional, but if everyone for like two minutes can come off your phone and mute, I feel a praise about to break through on this morning before even the word goes forth. So if you would come off mute just for one minute, amen, for one minute, let's just give God a praise right now. Come on, all over the place right now. Come on, bless it right now, right now, right now. Feel this right now. Feel it right now in the name of Jesus, right now, Lord God. Right now, Father, we thank you. And Lord, as we come preparing to receive your word, Lord God, that we thank you, Lord God, that the praise is the worship, Lord God. The glory, Lord God, all belongs to you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that we pray that as we have already sent up a sweet savor up to your nostril, Lord God, that you are pleased with each and every last one of us. And Lord, I pray right now that as we prepare for the receiving of your word, 
that, Lord God, no man, Lord God, be glorified, but only you be glorified. And, Father, most importantly, allow us not just to be hearers of your word, but, God, we thank you for the ability that you've already placed in us to do your word. Lord, we glorify you. We honor you. And it's in Jesus' matchless, mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. If it's all right with y'all, I'm excited about, you know, the word on today and what's going to share, and I want to dive right into it. We're going to look right into the book of Romans, the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, verse number 31 through 39. Again, that is Romans, the eighth chapter, verse number 31 through 39. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible on this morning. Amen. Romans 8, 31, 39, it reads, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Verse 33, who will bring a charge against God's elect? Because God is the one who justifies Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, yes. Rather, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who also intercedes for us? Verse 35, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, just as it is written. For your sakes, we are being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Verse 37, but in all things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things that present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word. Declare victory as Christians, as believers. We all have a new life. We have a new relationship, a new hope, a new help, a new knowledge. And now, but certainly not least, what we all have is a new assurance. Because what I want you to notice in this particular passage of scripture is how Paul opens up this section. You see, it's interesting that he opens this section found in Romans 8, 31 through 39. He opens up this section with a question we find in verse 31, in which Paul begins to say, what shall we say in response to this. Now, I want you to understand on this morning that Paul is stating this response in verse 31. What shall we say in response to this? And the reason why Paul is stating this is that he is in response to what? He's responding to a previous pericope of scripture found in Romans 8, 28 through 30. So let's uncover what Romans 8, 28 through 30 says. It says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed in the image of his son, so that he will be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30, and these whom he predestined, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, watch this declare victory, he also glorified. Now, what we find 
in Romans 8, 28 through 30, we find that Paul's response is to answer his own question that was preceded what he said in Romans 8, 31 through 39. And the way his response to answer his own question was by asking five more questions to which there are no answers. Now, who answers a question with a question? <laughs> Understand Romans 8, 31, 39. Paul begins to respond to Romans 8, 28 through 30 by asking five more questions to which I submit to you on this morning, there are no answers. And it is in these five unanswerable questions on this morning that I believe that Paul challenges anybody and everybody in heaven, in earth, earth, or even in hell to even answer because no one and nothing can harm the people who God has foreknown, who God has predestined, who God has called justified, and there is nothing that can harm those who God has already glorified. So what I want to do on this morning is that with each of Paul's five questions, I want to uncover them because they contain a truth that renders the questions that are unanswerable. So if we may, I want to start with question number one. Question number one is found in verse 31, where Paul renders, who can be against us? Romans 8, 31 says, if God be for us, or some of your translations may say, since God be for us, but mine just says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Who can be against you when God is on your side? Who can cause peril to the destiny that God has already forged? Even though the weapon may form, it shall not prosper because if God be for us, who can be against us? Now, if Paul had simply, if you think about it, asked who is against us, that really could have been easily answered because as a child of God, we all know we have so many different enemies that are trying to hinder us from walking in our purpose and destiny. For example, one of those who is against us is the world because the world is constantly always trying to conform us, getting us off the path or the focal point of our purpose and destiny. Another who is against us is our flesh, because our flesh has to be called into subjection each and every day, and if you like me, each and every minute, amen, which is ever-present an enemy that's always trying to conquer you. But also, if Paul were to ask who is against us, the third would be the devil, the enemy, Beelzebub, Satan himself. Because 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. But notice that in Romans 8.31, that Paul does not ask this question from a naive perspective. You see, the essence of Paul's question is contained in the if clause. You see, if, or rather since God is for us, who can be against us? You see, my brothers and sisters, the truth found in this question is simply put, no matter that tries to come your way, whatever that tries to come against you, that God is for us. And because God is for us, our enemies don't ever stand a chance. The world doesn't stand a chance. Our flesh doesn't stand a chance. The devil doesn't stand a chance because God is for us. I dare you to prophesy to yourself on this morning, even while you're on move, and say, God is for, and you put your name in there. God is for the devil. Amen? And whenever God is for you, our enemies never stand a chance. Second thing, 
is that Paul asked the question, how will he not also, found in verse number 32, we see how will he not also, in Romans 8.32, the word of God reads, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all of us, for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Let me say it again. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now, I want you to consider that if Paul would have simply asked, will God not give us all things? If he would have asked this, this might have caused us to question then God's goodness. But Paul, in fact, states in verse 32 that he that spares not his own son, but delivers him up for us all. Watch this clause. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? But because of God's goodness, he did not spare his son. Because of God's goodness, and he did not deliver him. He delivered him up for us. And this all points us to the cross. But who delivered us, Jesus, to be rendered up to the cross to die? We know it wasn't Judas because Judas' motive was for money. We know it wasn't Pilate for he was filled with fear. And we know it wasn't the Jews because the Jews were filled with envy. But it was the Father. Why did the Father do this? It's because the Father is filled with love. You see, the argument of this passage is that the reason we are able to receive because it was the greater bestowing love down to the lesser. Because in the giving of his son, God gave us everything that we will ever need. And that the cross is the guarantee of the continuing, unfailing love and generation, generosity of God. This verse is symbolic of a blank check for our needs, that when you call on the name of Jesus, that God gave us everything that we will ever need in his unfailing love, in his generosity, that God gave us and he continues to give us everything we need. The third question that Paul renders up and lifts up is found in verse 33, in which Paul renders the question, who will bring any charge? Who will bring any charge? Romans 8, 33, it reads, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Some of ought to be shouting right now because it's not the opinion of people. It's not the opinion of those on your job. It's not even in the opinion of those in your family. Who can lay charge to God's elect? It is God who justifies. But the question brings us, when we think about the whole process of justification, this question brings us into an imagined courtroom that Paul has now pulled us all into. Because if you only took the question, who shall lay anything to charge against God's elect? The answer, my brothers and sisters, would be Satan would try to bring the charge against God elect. Others who we've come in contact with may even try to bring a charge against God's elect. But Paul's argument on this morning is that no persecution can succeed. Since God is our judge, he has already justified us. So I want you to remember on this day, you have been justified. And that who would bring any charge against God elect? Because it's God who justifies. Number four, question four. Paul raises the question, who is he that condemns? Who is he that condemns? We read in 
uh, Romans 8, 34, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercessions for us. Don't you understand that whatever you're going through right now, whatever you're up against, or even whatever is trying to make its way to you, that Jesus Christ on the right hand of God, who's in the position of authority, is right now making intercessions for you, that he's praying for your health, he's praying for your purpose, praying for your destiny, praying for your hurt, praying for your pain, for he knows that all things work together for those who are for good, for all those who are called according to his purpose. Understand saying that Jesus right now is interceding on your behalf. And because those that are connected to you, those whose lives you have impacted, not only is he interceding for you, he's also interceding for them. So realize that Jesus maketh intercessions, intercessions for us. But the answer to this question is, who is he that condemns? Well, the answer, my brothers and sisters, the answer is our own heart. Our heart will condemn us, deceive us, and lead us to places outside of the will of God. Because we'll find in 1 John 3 and 20, for if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. I want you to notice the truth of this particular text that Christ is not condemning you because of these four reasons. It is Jesus the Christ who died for you. It is Jesus Christ who rose for you. It is Jesus who is at the right hand of the Father interceding for you and I. And it is Jesus who is our paraclete. Greek simply meaning one called alongside to help. The designation always given to the Holy Spirit, the parakaletos. It is Jesus who is our paraclete, who is right there called alongside of each and every one of us to help. This is the same word, paraclete, that we use in today's terms called advocate or our defense attorney. He's right now your advocate, your defense attorney, where people may even bring forth the facts, but how many of you realize that the facts are not the truth? That when the truth stands, when the truth intercedes, when the truth dies for you, when the truth rolls for you, when the truth is interceding for you, when the truth is called alongside to you, you have the greatest defense attorney that you can ever have in your entire life. And understand that if the glove doesn't fit, God Almighty, you then must acquit. Because even though there may be facts, it may not be the truth. Number five, the question that Paul raises, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? We read Romans 8, 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress Persecution, famine, nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sakes we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able 
to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So as we come to this last and great question, Paul himself, he tries to answer it for us in verse 35. Paul begins to try to answer that question, can tribulation separate us, which means can the pressures or afflictions of life, even though they are painful and people wonder how in the world were you able to make it through it, that nothing will separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Can this stress do it? Can those tight or difficult places in life when we don't even understand ourselves yet, we're rendering prayer, we're fasting, we're looking for solace, we're looking for peace, how we can find it, that when we're in those tight and difficult places, that even in those, it shall not separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Can persecution found in any form of harassment, any form of gossiping, murmuring, people beginning to scandalize your name, is any form of persecution of harassment? How do you realize even church hurt? Is there any form of harassment, persecution for Christ's sake that will separate you from the love of God? which is in Christ Jesus. What about famine? That maybe you're lacking something, especially possibly food, you're hungry, resources. You're not having the career. It didn't turn out the way that you thought it was going to turn out. Maybe your life is not on the trajectory that you envisioned it to be on. Maybe you're in the point where you're lacking something in your life. But even in famine, nothing does separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Can nakedness do it? Can peril any form of danger that you might be facing? Can the sword any type of literal threat? Will it be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord? Nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. But I want you to now notice the quote in verse 36, which was taken from Psalms 44 and 22, that in Romans 8, verse 36, it reads, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. I want you to notice in this that Paul, He's not telling you what he thinks. Paul is sharing with you what he knows because Paul suffered all things, which lets us know on today that if Paul went through it and that God is not a respectful person, that as believers on today, that we are not immune from suffering from life. Suffering will be a part of life, and we might encounter it. But we find in verse 37 that it gives us comfort. It gives us the strength to move on. As Brother Mark says, no turning back. Verse 37 says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. What Paul is sharing with us I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. That even through the gravest sufferings of life, when your heart is bleeding, when people who you thought had your back running away from you, understanding all things, we are more than. We're just not conquerors. We are more than. It's unexpected. People can't even figure it out. They can't even understand how you have a smile, how you're able to lift a praise, how you're able to have joy. All the things that you have endured, understand that we are more. There are some situations, there are some sufferings in life 
that conquering ain't just going to do it. You're going to have to be called to be more than a conqueror. And we find that strength through him that loved us. You see, what Paul is conveying on this morning is that in all things, we are more than conquerors. How? The way we are more than conquerors is through him. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, that loved us past tense through the cross, the finished work of the cross, that everything we will ever need has already been accomplished through the life of Jesus Christ. So as we prepare for closing comments, we're going to find that Paul now reaches the climax of this passage. He reaches the climax, the buildup, the finale found in verses 38 through 39, Romans 8, 38 through 39. He begins to share this, 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 this life-changing word where he says, for I am persuaded. Is there anybody persuaded on this morning? Is there anybody that has assurance on this morning? Is there anybody that's willing to stand tall, stand in the midst of your salvation? For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. I am persuaded that there's no disappointment, there's no job loss, there's no, there's no lack of money, there's no lack of resources, there's no bite back biting, there's no loss of friends, there's no loss of purpose, there's no loss of anything. I am persuaded, meaning I am assured that in my salvation that I stand fully convinced, not what I heard, but what I know. I stand fully convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, no power, no things present, no things to come, no height, no death, no other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I'm assured that in my salvation, no matter what comes my way, I stand fully convinced. Do I get weak on that journey sometimes? Yeah. Do I want to give up sometimes in that journey? Yeah. Even though I feel it, my actions won't do it because I stand fully convinced because of the assurance in my salvation. And understand that when you understand or you are convinced of God's assurance, you will know without a doubt that God is for us, but not only is God for us, I want you to make it personal. God is for you. Many of us, the enemy is trying to convince you that God is not for you, but God is for you. I'm standing as well as understanding and convinced of God's assurance and my salvation that I know without a shadow of a doubt that not only is God for us, but Christ Jesus died for us, that God has justified us, that even though the facts might prove that I'm guilty, but the truth says because of grace, not guilty, that I am convinced of God's assurance that I know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is interceding for me right now, that even though I wish, I hope that I could live a perfect life, but there's no way I'm living a perfect life because I've come to the understanding of knowing me that I am perfectly imperfect trying to become the best version of myself through the model of Jesus Christ, that I am perfectly imperfect trying to become the best version of myself. 
I stand convinced in God's assurance, knowing without a shadow of a doubt that no matter where I am, times that I've fallen, times my heart has led me astray, I stand convinced that Jesus loves me. And not only am I convinced that Jesus loves me, that he loves you. I'm also convinced that there is no power, no principle, there's no demon, there's no situation, there's no person, there's no setback, there's no circumstance that will ever separate us from his love, neither height nor depth, neither hell nor heaven. There is no power that will separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. And all because of our assurance and our salvation is anchored in the loving, unchanging purpose, promise, and power of God that I am assured in my salvation, that I stand fully convinced. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord God, that as Paul has uniquely, Lord God, advocated, our defense attorney argued the question, Lord God, that could not be answered by anyone on earth in hell, but only through you, that through these questions, Lord God, that all things work together for our good, that, Lord God, who then could be against us, Lord God? I thank you that how will he not also, God? I thank you who will bring any charge against us? Who is it that condemns? For it's only you that justify of God. And who shall separate us from the love of Jesus Christ? That we are able to stand, Lord God, convinced and assured in our salvation that we are convinced of the love of Jesus for our lives. And everything we need is in him. So, God, I thank you not only for the hearing, but, Lord, in those times when we're challenged, when we don't understand, when we think there is no hope, remind us of this word and all of the declarations that have been shared that God loves. Lord, we'll be so careful to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in your darling, matchless son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, amen, declare victory. I'm going to ask very quickly before we go to closing comments, if there's anyone that has not had an opportunity to say good morning, if you would kindly unmute, amen, and be able to share the pleasantries with everyone on this line. Good morning, this is Kevin, and thank you, thank you, thank you for your declaration. Good morning, Kevin. God bless you, sir. To God be the glory, my brother. Amen. Thank Anyone you. else? Hi, good morning. God bless you all. Amen, amen, and glory to God. Good morning, this is Kemper. Amen. Good morning, Kemper. Wonderful to hear from you on this morning. Amen. Anyone else on this favored Friday that we know that God loves us? <laughs> Good morning, Pastor Darrell. This is Glorious Gloria. God bless you. Thank you for the word. Happy Good Friday, morning. everybody. <laughs> Good morning, Glorious Gloria. Happy Friday to you, and thank you so much again for your encouraging words. Amen. Anyone else? Good, Good morning. morning. This is- Good morning, Patrice. Happy Friday. Amen. Anyone else? Good morning, this is Leone. A great decoration. Thank you. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, this is Leone. We are so glad and grateful to God. Amen. Anyone else? Yes, good morning. Hi, Pastor Darrell. This is Moxie Mona. Great great declaration. God be praised. God bless you, Moxie. To God be the glory. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? 
Good morning. This is Liberty. Great decoration. Amen. I knew freedom was coming through. Good morning, Liberty. <laughs> Good to hear from you. Anyone else? <laughs> Amen. Well, we're going to transition. Good morning, uh -oh, so Mary. Thank somebody. you. <laughs> Good Thank you for morning. that great declaration. This is Mary. God bless you. Hey. Thank you. God bless you, Mary. Thank you for getting in and, and sharing your beautiful sound as well. Any, anyone else? We're going to also move the closing comments. So if you have not said good morning or something you want to share that you were able to receive out of the de declaration, amen, we're going to ask that you do that right now. Man. Girl. Yes. It's Rochelle. I just want to say, I was over here snapping my fingers saying, hey, I'm saved. Hey, I'm, I'm excited <laughs> that I decided to do something different with my life that I said <laughs> yes. Not just because of what I saw my mom, my grandmother, my grandfather do, but I experienced him for myself and I know yeah. him to be a keeper a heart regulator, a heart fixer uh, uh, to mm. cover me in my pain and my loss that he was there. I want to tell everybody, thank you for praying. I um, had a prayer request yesterday that I had a deposition. If I tell you, if God be mm. for you, nothing <laughs> and nobody can be against you. Uh, it man, it was just uh, you know you you go in thinking one thing. I didn't think nothing. I just knew that I was going in standing on truth, and it is what it is. He is who he is. So I thank God for the word. I'm happy it's Friday, but I'm gonna be listening to playbacks all weekend because they have been good. So thank you again, Pastor Darrell. I love you. I appreciate you. You know, coming from me and my sis, Popeyes, he come. Um, if you back on Popeye's yet, but you know, we got you, we got you. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Thank you, man of God. Thank you so much, Rochelle, and thank you for all that you do and the reminders. I'm so grateful. And yes, I'm limiting myself to possibly twice a month. So I'm trying to make sure I'm doing better with my life. <laughs> Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Good morning, Good morning Pastor. <laughs> Well, I'll be praying for Cat. This is Cat. I'm just so grateful. And I, when I think back over my life and how he saved me and how he loved me so much with, with my ratchet self, you know, it's just, it's nothing. Nothing. The love lifts me. You hear me? The love. Oh, bless you, Savior. Oh, my God, you, Lord, God. I glorify you right now, Glory Lord God. God. Hallelujah. I'm nothing. I'm thinking about all, all the stuff that I've been through, all the stuff that I've done. Nothing. Mm. Just separate Glory. nothing. Mm. That's the assurance, and he done showed up so many times. And even when I didn't get it, and when I was in a dark, dark space, and how he mm. Oh, glory, God, I'm just so grateful. Nothing. Mm. Separate nothing. Mm. Separate from the love of God. Hallelujah. Nothing. Mm. Oh, glory, God. Glory. Nothing. Glory be to God. Name. Oh, glory. Oh, my God. Thank you. Oh, glory. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. I, oh, I challenge glory. everybody right now on this line Hallelujah. to unmute yourself. God will use the foolish to confound the wise. I tell you for one minute, just y'all yeah. nothing right now. Come on, let me play nothing right now. 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 I'm <laughs> 
anyone else has anything else we want to share I just want to encourage you amen is there anyone else sounds like someone was unmuted good morning this is Ruth good morning Ruth it is so good to hear your sound God bless you <laughs> thank you I'm so tired but I just want to say this I'm sitting here and I'm exhausted as all our doors from cooking fish all night but I have to say this. I'm so grateful that God loves me. Only thing that could top this this declaration this entire week is uh, our A and B selection. I don't know if Dee Dee is on the line. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you can join me in a song. You know, on on seriously. Um, only thing that I think the uh, victory is missing is a choir. Because I tell mm. you, I feel like singing right now and can't sing the lyrics. Mm. It's kind of right now. I don't know who's singing this song, but um, it goes, I know I've been changed. Um, mm. I don't know the song, but I just know that I know I have been changed. Amen. I'm so glad God had mercy and grace over my life. I'm telling you, I feel like I feel like Kathy. I feel like everybody that was uh, just praising God right now. I'm I'm just excited. I can run around the block right now. <laughs> so we need a choir. I'm gonna be honest on the line. We need a choir because I tell you, I just want to sing right now. I just want to shout. My out. God. Mm, mm, mm. Amazing inspiration. Feel it from my clothes to my. I just, you know, how you know how you when you be in church and you want to just shout and you got to just sit there and just cross your legs so you, because I knew I was known back in the day for clearing out the aisle and they used to talk about me. Oh, there she goes. But I hey, look, look. knew that I was shouting and clearing out the aisle. I don't know what I was. God was working on me to get me to this place. I know that He was. Mm. I wouldn't have made it through all that I went through if He had not been working on me. But I thank mm-hmm. God. So I'm not going to sing online right now. I'm going to get off the line and I'll sing <laughs> as I watch these <laughs> as I watch these clothes <laughs> in the privacy of my own home. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord for you, sister. Thank you for sharing that. And, and a couple of things I want to share with you. And again, God is not looking for a perfect note. He says it's joy from noise. So I get it. But God will honor your praise no matter where you are. And then secondly, for them folks who looking at you and talk about you, let them talk. Because you about to still get your blessings for God has already been told on your life. Amen. They talk about me all the time. I'm too loud. I'm too whatever. I don't follow the format. Whatever. I'm going to do what God is calling me to do in the form he called me to do it. Because I, too, can get a little ghetto sometimes. Amen. So we are grateful for who God made you to be. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Amen. Good morning. This is the but I like what you just said, Pastor, about ghetto. We can be spiritually ghetto, you know? The praises is going up, the is coming down. You know, the praise is over us. You know, yes, ghetto, spiritual, praise God. I do it all the time. I, sometimes I get that running spirit. You think I care about what's going on? There you go. I praise there God. you go. There you go. Amen. Y'all got to remember... Y'all got to remember that he came for the ratchet, too. Y'all just get so caught up. Thank you. <laughs> it's the righteous and the ratchet. But um, when we was talking, um, Pastor Dear, I was thinking about the choir. We are a choir. And I know my my noise is joyful only unto the Lord. Because my husband be telling me, girl, please stop. Whatever you call yourself doing, I'm singing unto the Lord. So amazing grace will always be my song of praise. When you think of that, when you think of that right there. Mm-hmm. Amazing Grace will always be my song of praise. I'm so grateful right now. And I sing to these babies every day. Some of them say, please stop, and some of them encourage me. So as they come in, I always sing their names and stuff. You know, some, Miss mm. Coco, sing some more. And some of them be like, listen, I'm about to go in the quiet room. So you stop singing. But just make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise because yeah. he wants the authentic worship. Yeah. And that's what it comes out singing. So I love you, Pastor Darrell. And two piece this week, and I feel it in my spark. <laughs> Don't you dare forget that, Pepper. Amen. I'm grateful for you. <laughs> Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Amen. Anyone else? I'm grateful just for the presence of God that continues to stay within Declare Victory again to all the declares. Amen. I, too, will be going back listening also. But what a powerful week, powerful month, powerful ministry. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Then with all hearts and mind in order on this favorite Friday, I just want you to know that nothing shall ever separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Stand in your assurance, in your salvation, that you are convinced. Father, I thank you right now. We thank you for 
this move, not a monument, this move of God on this week, this month, this ministry, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for Dion, Lord God, that who continues to not only share, but also, Lord God, will allow us to see as an example. We thank you for Jesus Christ, for the love that he also shares and has shown an example and a direction to how we should live. So, Father, I thank you that each and every person under the sound of my voice, that as we prepare for this day, this weekend, even next week and weeks to come, that, Father, no matter what comes up against us, Lord God, neither it might be, Lord God, death, life, angels, principalities, powers, things of the present, things to come, height, death, Lord God, or any other creature, we ask and we pray that you give us the strength that it shall not be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, we declare it, we decree it, and we believe it. It's in Jesus' matchless and mighty name we pray. Amen. Everyone, I love you. Be blessed. Have a wonderful weekend. Nothing. God bless you all. Have a wonderful weekend. Nothing. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you. Glory to Absolutely nothing. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing. You guys have a blessed weekend. Yes, have a blessed weekend. Walk in victory. We are victorious. Declare victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.